What's up guys, Nathan here. After many trials and hardships, you've finally slain the insatiable Kitava, saving all of Oriath and Rayclast from certain destruction. You've also hunted dangerous beasts, delved deep below ground, and combated the notorious Immortal Syndicate. You've become a champion of the people, and a force to be feared by literal gods. But what now? Well, Exile, this is only the beginning. In today's video, I'll be giving you a crash course on Path of Exile's endgame. This will include mapping, master missions, uber lab, crafting, league mechanics, and bossing. Of course, each of these topics could easily take up their own video, so for now, I'll just be sticking to brief overviews. Before we begin though, there's one important thing you should remember. There is no wrong way to go about Path of Exile's endgame. There will always be currency making methods that outshine others, but at the end of the day, you should be doing whatever is most fun for you, no matter what your favorite streamer or in-game friends are doing. Video games are supposed to be fun, and Path of Exile is no exception. Mapping As you might have guessed, mapping is far and away the most important endgame activity in Path of Exile. Not only because it's the most obvious activity to engage with, but also because it acts as a vessel for nearly every other thing you do in the game. If you have no interest in mapping, then you won't make it very far at all. Basically, maps are consumable items that can be used to create semi-randomized zones that are loosely based on tile sets from the 10 Axe. Like other items in Path of Exile, maps can be crafted to alter their quality, mods, and rarity. Running an uncrafted map is barely worth your time, whereas running a well-rolled one can shower you in currency. While we're on the topic of mapping, I should probably bring up the Atlas of Worlds, which is basically one big overview of all 159 maps in the game. The Atlas is home to a wealth of information, including Shaper and Elder's movements, your accumulating master missions, and indirect rules about where you can expect certain maps to drop. I won't be going in-depth on the Atlas in this video, but it's important to know that it can heavily influence more advanced mapping strategies as you make your way deeper into the endgame. Anyway, back to mapping. If you don't have any specific strategies or goals in mind, here are a few tips. Complete every bonus objective on your atlas. This means transmute every white map, alk every yellow map, and alk and vol every red map, at least once a piece. Complete all of Zana's quests. This goes hand in hand with number one, so I recommend doing them at the same time. This quest line, which progresses from From Nightmare into Dream to the Eldritch Decay will always be active and tracked on the right side of your screen until you fully complete it. The higher tier map you run, the more you should invest in crafting it. Here are some loose guidelines as to how much you should consider spending per map, but this will still vary depending on what kind of returns you're personally looking for. One last thing you should know about mapping, especially in regards to these tips, is that buying maps is absolutely something you should consider doing. There's always poe.trade and pathofexile.com slash trade, but if you want to be more efficient, I highly recommend trying out poemap.live for easy one-to-one -one trades, or poe.ninja's bulk map buy to easily fill in entire tiers at once. As you can probably guess, there's a lot more to mapping than I can fit in this video. However, if you're brand new to Path of Exile's endgame, just remember two things. Maps are the key to every other activity in the game, and focusing on 100% atlas completion is one of the best ways to get started. Master Missions Honestly, it's criminal of me to just lump these cool and complex systems into one topic, but I'm trying to keep this video under 20 minutes, so bear with me. Master Missions are basically Path of Exile's version of dailies, but with a twist. Every day you log on, you'll be awarded with 5 master missions, and every time you complete a map, there is a significant chance you'll receive one as well. These master missions will be locked to the color of maps you've been running, so you can't farm tier 16 master missions by spamming tier 1 maps. The master missions themselves will actually vary greatly depending on which master we're talking about. Some will instantly spit out loot, like Einhar and Alva, whereas others require some time to pay off, such as June and Nico. To take on one of these missions, simply talk to the relevant master in your hideout and they'll open a window for you to put in a map where the mission itself will take place. For the following section of this video, I'll be taking some time to talk about each master. Zana is probably the most straightforward master. She appears once per mission and will basically offer you a handful of submissions for you to choose from. These can include killing harbingers, finding a unique item, opening a breach, and much more. More importantly, these tasks will always take place in a different map. This can be used to progress your atlas completion, or just act as some bonus loot and experience. 
Einhar is another straightforward master, and his missions revolve around catching beasts. When you load into one of his missions, you'll have to catch at least three beasts, two yellow and one red. This can be done by damaging them to around 10% life, at which point Einhar will throw a net, capturing and teleporting the beast to your menagerie. The menagerie is an area you can visit anytime via a fast travel waypoint and is used to sacrifice your captured beasts to create and craft items, as well as fight special bosses. Alva is where master missions start to get tricky. Her bit is she's a time-traveling treasure hunter who will send you into the past to change the course of history. More specifically, her missions will send you back in time to certain rooms of an ancient temple where you can choose one of two architects' construction plans to foil. By thwarting one of them, the other will progress their own. After doing this 12 times, Alva will discover the present-day location of the temple and you'll be able to raid it, reaping the rewards of your time-traveling shenanigans. Nico is an interesting case, because although his missions seem simple, his content has a surprising amount of… depth. His missions will spawn three clickable mounds of sulfite, and once you collect them all, you're good to go. However, things get a lot more interesting when you visit Nico's mine encampment, where you use said sulfite to dig deep below Rayclast's surface. The difficulty and rewards for going as deep as possible scales almost infinitely, so it's definitely worth your time to do so. Last but not least, we have June. June acts as your crime-fighting buddy as you combat and investigate the Immortal Syndicate, a vicious gang of undying baddies hell-bent on carrying out their master's will. Honestly, the complexity of this master's missions dwarf that of all the others, but save for maybe Delve, the rewards do as well. I highly recommend looking up a more detailed guide for Syndicate content, but if you want a couple quick tips for maximum profits, make everyone hate each other, rank up members before running safe houses, and never kill the mastermind. In summary, Master Missions are unique and rewarding slices of endgame content that you can only engage with via dailies and random map spawns. Some of them are more complicated than others, but luckily, making the effort to learn them is well worth your time. Let me know in the comments below which Master you'd like to see a more in-depth guide on. Uber Lab. Uber Lab, also known as the Eternal Labyrinth, is a unique piece of endgame content. Unlike other activities, it requires practically no interaction with maps and heavily benefits from specific build choices. Plus, if you get lucky, it could be one of the most profitable money makers in the game. But what exactly is Uber Lab? To gain access to their ascendancy, every character in the game has to run Lab, with each of its four difficulties granting two of those special skill points. The first three difficulties are relatively easy with predictable layouts, and the last difficulty is far harder and drastically changes every day. However, it also drops good enough loot to be worth farming. If you've completed Uberlab before, you probably have a pretty good idea of what the content looks like. You travel between about a dozen zones, collecting keys and avoiding traps along the way. You fight the boss three times, each in a different arena when he loses about a third of his life. When you finally make it to the end, you're showered in currency, gems, and maps based on how many keys you collected, and you get to enchant a pair of gloves, boots, or a helmet. While the majority of these rewards are great and make Uberlab farming worth your time and investment, it's the helmet and chance that entice a large percentage of players. The vast majority of them appeal only to niche builds or are borderline useless, but there is always a small number of tier 1 enchants that can make you rich on the spot. Some of the classic jackpot enchants have been molten strike projectiles, tornado shot projectiles, arc chains, and many more. If you want to learn more about the currently profitable helmet enchants, check out poe.ninja slash challenge slash helmet dash enchants. If you're interested in farming lab, there are a couple of things you should know. First of all, efficiently farming requires a specific build, which can be one of two things. Something super tanky, like an ancestral warchief jug, or something super fast, like a blade vortex pathfinder. The former aims to, slowly but surely, get as many keys per run as possible, bringing in a reliable amount of chaos per hour. The latter focuses on running lab in a fraction of the time of the competition, while also heavily increasing the number of helmet enchants it generates. Both of these strategies have their benefits, but as you might guess, newer players will have an easier time playing a build that's basically immortal. The last tip I have for all you would-be lab runners out there is to use an awesome website called poelab.com. Not only is it full of useful information for pretty much all aspects of the game, but they run lab every day, giving us plebs a nice preview of the layout. That's about all I have on the topic of Uber Lab. If you enjoy this kind of content and want to try something a little different, consider rolling a lab farmer and giving it a shot. 
especially at the start of a new league. Crafting. I'm not going to lie, crafting is not my strong suit. Sure, I understand how it works, and I've definitely thrown my fair share of fossils at astral plates in my day, but it's not something I regularly spend a ton of time on. However, if you're interested in learning a complex system, making your own items, and getting richer than you could possibly imagine, well, then crafting might be right up your alley. Crafting in Path of Exile is unique in that there is no actual gold standard. All currencies used for trading are also used as crafting materials. Here is the most vanilla way of crafting an item using standard currencies. Start with a white item of your choice, use an orb of transmutation, then spam alteration orbs until you have a good pair of mods, use a regal orb to add a mod and turn your item rare, use an exalted orb or three, and if at any point you are dissatisfied with your results, use an orb of scouring to start over. This is one of the most basic ways to craft in the game, but it's also far from recommended, especially for players on a budget. There are dozens of different ways to achieve similar results, such as using fossils, essences, multi-modding, or just plain old chaos spam. Another cool aspect of crafting is that you'll generally have more crafting bench options unlocked than people who don't pursue this activity, which means you're free to help with the crafts they don't have and collect a tip afterwards. This isn't super reliable since people won't automatically trust you with their items, but if you build a good reputation, this can be another serious moneymaker. I'm not going to go any more in depth on crafting because it really does deserve its own video, but I will be linking a few fantastic content creators in the description below for those of you who want to learn more. Zizarin has an excellent three-part guide on crafting for beginners, Nevandis Gaming has a high production value and up-to-date beginner's guide, and Path of Math has some real big boy crafting content once you're ready to start digging deeper. For all you would-be mirror printing crafters out there, I do have just a couple more pieces of advice. Don't expect to really profit off crafting until you have a strong understanding of both the process itself and the market demand of the league you're playing in, and, more importantly, don't expect to make serious currency without investing a good amount as well. League Mechanics Leagues are basically like mini-expansions for Path of Exile that come out every three months, and if the community likes them, they're integrated into the core game. These include mechanics such as breaches, harbingers, strongboxes, and much more. The key to interacting with these old pieces of content is to tackle them on a case-by-case -case basis. For example, if you feel like strongboxes are boring and unrewarding, look them up. You may learn they can actually be crafted, improved via sextants and prophecies, and target farmed via scarabs, all of which are pieces of information that will greatly improve your overall endgame experience. Speaking of target farming, there is one factor that most relevant pieces of old league content have in common. Scarabs. Scarabs are primarily obtained through June's master missions and act as consumables to be placed in your map device to allow you to interact with their specific league mechanics. For example, a gilded Parandus Scarab will spawn four additional Parandus chests, as well as contain the notorious Kadira Parandus. Or a rusted Legion Scarab will cause an additional timeless monolith to spawn. Proper use of Scarabs can greatly increase your per map profit, as well as provide some interesting twists on your regular gameplay. Some league mechanics are even easier to interact with, thanks to the map device. As you progress through Zana's questline, you'll unlock new mods that you can pay a small fee to add to any non-unique map. These vary from league to league and range from extremely valuable to borderline wastes of currency. When it comes to league mechanics, it's hard to make too many general statements. Just remember that knowledge is king, and taking the time to research something you don't understand can quickly turn seemingly useless content into something highly desirable. Bossing. The last endgame activity I'm going to talk about today is bossing. As the name suggests, bossing involves killing bosses, but there's a lot more to it than that. First of all, it's important to remember that Path of Exile is actually a multiplayer game and different builds excel at different things. For example, the kind of content Tornado Shot Deadeyes focus on will likely be very different from what a Righteous Fire Juggernaut pursues. More specifically, some characters just aren't cut out to kill bosses like Uber Elder or even Uber Azaro. Players interested in bossing capitalize on this by selling carries. They go through the trouble of learning fights inside and out, rolling specialized builds, and generally planning their entire endgame around helping other players take down these tough enemies. Some historically strong bossing builds include Blade Flurry Jug, Herald of Agony Occultist, Scourge Arrow Ascendant, and Glacial Cascade Saboteur. Selling carries usually involves advertising in global 820 chat or creating a thread on the forums. 
However, the buyer always has to assume some risk due to carries who take their money and run or just fail to kill the boss or complete the necessary challenges. This means that, much like helping people craft their items, building a reputation is key. Luckily, you don't necessarily have to sell carries to make a profit. Bossing can also be done on your own simply by buying fragment sets. This is less reliable income than selling carries, but if it's early enough in the league, it can be plenty profitable and doesn't require interacting with other players. Honestly, there isn't much more to bossing. Roll a tanky build, kill bosses, and get money. It's not for everyone, but bossing is definitely an important niche in the Path of Exile economy and something I think every player should try at least once. Conclusion I'm not going to pretend Path of Exile's endgame is simple. It's not. But if you haven't realized yet, the most important takeaway from this video is that you don't need to understand or even engage with all of it. Want to just farm Uberlab? Sure. Want to run maps? Go for it. Want to craft all day long? Be my guest. If you're feeling overwhelmed, start small. Pick one topic from this video and jump in. When completed properly, pretty much all endgame activities are profitable. Just play the game the way you want to, and don't worry about being an expert on everything. Thanks for watching, this has been Nathan, and I'll see you next time. Thank you! Hello everyone, I just wanted to thank my awesome Patreon supporters, Real Human, Zikarak, Squally, Zuljan, Coda, Julia, Alan, Kepler, Sparky, Kata, Fusk, Putzak, Heiser801, Olivier, Kyle, Ice Dude, Ginzik, Anonymous, and Orangina. You guys are awesome, especially hanging with me through these last couple weeks. I have a huge announcement that I'm not going to make right now, but I am going to be putting up a quick video probably tomorrow, I guess maybe early the day after potentially, um, that sort of goes over what I've been doing these past couple weeks and what I'm going to be doing going forward. Um, again, it's going to be an exciting announcement. That's all I want to give away so far. Uh, otherwise, regular stuff. If anyone else is interested in joining the Patreon team, you can check me out at patreon.com slash NathanBrotherBob. Discord, a bottom right-hand corner. Instagram, bottom left-hand corner. Um, thank you. Thank you so much. Really, uh, it's it's been a while since I made a video. I'm, I'm so impressed that I still have uh, all you lovely people to thank for supporting me. But uh, uh, this video was a big one, and I think a lot of the stuff I'm going to be doing in the near future is also going to be qualifying as uh, big ones, quote-unquote. So uh, thanks again, and I'll talk to you guys very soon.